Hello again. Welcome back to New Zealand. In this lesson, we're going to look at a new class of attribute selection methods, uh, scheme independent attribute selection. So the wrapper method we looked at before is straightforward, simple and direct, but it's really slow. Uh, so here's a couple of alternatives. We could use a single attribute evaluator, evaluate the attributes one by one independently, and then kind of rank them and use base our attribute selection on that. And that allows us to eliminate irrelevant attributes. And we'll be looking at that in the next lesson. Uh, a second uh, alternative is to combine an attribute subset evaluator with a search method. And that allows us to eliminate redundant attributes as well as irrelevant ones, so it's potentially much more powerful. Now we've already looked at search methods in uh, Lesson 4.1, uh, different kinds of search methods, and we've looked at one kind of attribute subset evaluator, the wrapper method. That is a way, a scheme-dependent way of evaluating an attribute subset. And now we're going to look at scheme-independent ways of, uh, of uh, evaluating attribute subsets. In fact, we're going to look at a method called CFS subset eval. And it considers an attribute subset to be good if the attributes it contains are high, highly correlated with a class attribute and not strongly correlated with one another. So it comes up with a measure of goodness of an attribute subset. This is a measure applied to a subset. And uh, we sum the uh, correlation between the attribute and the class over all of the attributes in the subset. And then we divide that by the correlations of each attribute with each other attribute summed over all pairs of attributes. We take the square root of that. And for correlation, the CFS subset eval method uses an entropy-based metric called the symmetric uncertainty. And it's pretty straightforward, but I'm not going to talk about that. So let's try it. Let's compare CFS subset eval with the wrapper selection on the ionosphere data. We're going to look first at naive bays. So uh, coming over to Weka here, I've got naive. I've got uh, the ionosphere data uh, open, and I'm going to classify that with naive bays, standard naive bays. And when I do that, I get 82, 83 percent. All right. Now let's do uh, attribute selection, and of course we're going to use the attribute selected classifier to ensure that we're not cheating. So that's a meta classifier, the attribute selected classifier. And within that, remember, we can select a classifier. We're going to choose Naive Bayes. Naive Bayes. And we can choose, uh, we're also going to choose a uh, subset eval evaluator. And we're going to use as the default CFS subset eval and the search method. I'll just use the default search method. So let's run that. And now we get 88.6, 89%, which is a lot better. So attribute selection has really helped here. Let's try attribute selection using the wrapper method. So I'm going to use the same uh, learning scheme, naive base, but here I'm going to choose the wrapper method. And for that, of course, I've got to specify a machine learning method to use to wrap, and we're going to wrap naive base. And I'm going to run that. Well, everything else is default, and it's going to take a while. There we go. It's finished now. It took quite a long time, and we've got 91% accuracy. So back on the slide in the naive phase column, we've got the 83% with without attribute selection. Attribute selection helped quite a lot with CFS subset eval, which is very fast, and it was even better with this very slow wrapper method. When I did IBK, uh, I got 86% for plain IBK, 89% for CFS subset eval, and the wrapper, I wrapped IBK. So in each of these things, I wrapped the corresponding class, or the classifier, the one that we're uh, using for classification. And I got 89%. Uh, so uh, the two attribute selection methods were the same. J48 was already extremely good without any attribute selection, and uh, I got 92% for the uh, very fast method, and in fact I got slightly worse results, 90% uh, for the much slower wrapper selection. A little bit surprising that uh, wrapper selection does worse than CFS subset eval for J48. These are just based on one run, of course. 
So the conclusion is that CFS subset eval is nearly as good as the wrapper method and much faster. Now there's a number of attribute subset evaluators in Weka. There's a couple of scheme dependent methods. The wrapper subset eval uses internal cross validation. And I think uh, in a previous lesson we mentioned uh, briefly the classifier subset eval, which is like the wrapper method, but instead of using cross validation, it uses a separate held out test set. Those are scheme dependent. And then the scheme independent methods, well, there's a few of those. We've looked at CFS subset, subset eval. Uh, and there's another one called the consistency subset eval, which measures consistency and class values of a training set with respect to the attributes. So if I just go over to Weka here and have a look at the different methods of attribute selection, that's CFS subset eval. I talked about classifier uh, subset eval, that's a scheme dependent method. Consistency subset eval, that's the one we're just kind of talking about. If I kind of look at that and get some more information, it evaluates the worth of a subset by consistency. And to really understand that method, you need to go and look at the paper where it's referenced. As you can see, there's quite a lot of different methods of uh, attribute subset evaluators. Uh, there are, uh, this list includes meta evaluators, which co incorporate other operations. I'm not going to talk about that here. So, in conclusion, attribute subset selection involves a subset evaluation measure and a search method. Some methods are scheme dependent, some measures are scheme dependent, like uh, the wrapper method, which is very slow, and others are scheme independent, like CFS subset eval, which as we find was quite fast. Even faster is to use a single attribute evaluator using ranking, and we're going to talk about it in the next lesson. But before that, off you go and do the activity associated with this lesson, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.